So in the previous videos I showed you how .NET will attempt to locate an assembly at runtime. We've seen how that's different from how the compiler locates assemblies. The general algorithm is if the assembly is signed, thus strongly named, .NET will look inside the GAC first and then start probing around in the local directory. I've also shown you how .NET will search in subdirectories as long as that subdirectory has the exact same name as the basic name of the assembly. In this video I want to show you how to customize where .NET looks. There's several ways to do this. The most basic way is setting up a private path, which we're going to do here. Uh, hopefully you've been watching the previous videos in the playlist. It's the exact same setup as we've had always. We have cow and we have main class and main class uses cow. I can list the contents of the directory and I've compiled cow into the farm assembly and we reference that assembly from main class.exe when we call cow moo. And if I just run this as is main class.exe hit enter, we see mooing version one, which is the output we would hopefully expect. Now I could make a directory called farm and move the farm DLL into that directory, but we've seen how that works by default. What if I don't want to call it farm though? Maybe I want to package all of my assemblies into one directory, say make directory me referenced assemblies. That's kind of wordy. How about just me uh, well, let's finish that off. Me assemblies. Okay, I want to put all my assemblies in there, the farm and any other assemblies I want to reference. Well, let's do that. I'm going to say move farm.dll into me assemblies and clear the screen, list the contents of the directory. Farm DLL is now residing in me assemblies. And I say directory, they are directories, but if you like to think of them as Windows folders, that's fine. It's the exact same thing. Now when I run main class.exe and hit enter, it'll bomb saying, hey, I'm trying to find the farm version one with this public key token. I've signed the farm. Uh, I can't find it. It's not here. Well, it's, it's inside me assemblies. We have to tell .NET to do that. And the way we instruct .NET to do that is via a config file. And you'll see these all over the place inside of .NET and ASP.NET especially. But even in your local applications, you can make config files and .NET will locate them, open them, and interpret them. And there's thousands of settings you can set inside of config files. The way you can generally do that with Visual Studio Looks like I was, yeah, I was playing around with this before. Let me delete that and start from scratch. You can add new item, application configuration file. And if you call it app.config, then it will be placed inside of your local project. And when you build Visual Studio, not .NET, Visual Studio will copy this config file to your output directory and rename it the same name as the executable, but uh, put a dot config at the end of it. I think it'll help you actually see me do one of these. Let's bring our folder into view here. And everything I do here I could do on the command prompt, but it might be easier for you to see me do it raw. And I'm always going to cheat. I'm going to say new, and I'm actually clicking text document. I could probably click anything in here, but text document. Why? Because I just want a blank document. I need to name this document the same name as my executable though with dot config on the end of it. So in this case my executable's name is main class.exe so it will be main class.exe dot config. Hit enter, Windows complains, just say yes. It's my cheap way of renaming a text file to a XML file. Now I could have done that with Visual Studio. When you add an app config Again, Visual Studio, when you compile, will copy that app config to your output directory and rename it appropriately, which is the name of the executable followed by dot config. Well, now that I have this dot config file, I'm going to drag it into Visual Studio and start editing it. And if you just Google .NET config files, you'll find the whole schema for this and the various billions of settings there are in there. But let's do uh, the standard XML version 1, encoding is UTF-8, and then down here, configuration, like so. You see IntelliSense is kind of helping me out because it knows most of the schema for the XML. Once you get in here though, in runtime, we're going to instruct .NET via this runtime tag to, to bind our assembly in the assembly binding area. We want it to probe 
probing. Notice I lost my IntelliSense there, but I wanted to probe my private path, and the private path will be the name of whatever I called that that path. What I call it, me assemblies. So me assemblies. I wanted to pri to probe me assemblies. This is a private path meaning it's a subdirectory of the directory that we are executing the executable from. <laughs> Say that 10 times. Basically, a private path is a subfolder inside the working directory, which is me C sharp code in this case. And we also have to add on assembly binding an XML namespace so it maps correctly. If you're not sh familiar with XML namespaces, uh, Google it. <laughs> Hopefully, anyway, URN, schemas, data. I, I use some auto completion there just to get Visual Studio to help me here. Right here, though, I have to change it to assembly uh, version one. Without this default XML namespace, this probing element will not be in the proper XML namespace, and thus it will not work. So it's important to have this here. Let me do a new vertical tab group on this. Sc control and scroll my mouse, zoom out a little bit, turn your uh, turn it up to high definition if necessary. So just to recap, let me clear the screen here and start over and put this somewhere where it hopefully makes sense. We have main class.exe. It is referencing farm.dll, which is in me assemblies folder. .NET will not look in this folder, me assemblies folder, unless I tell .NET to do so explicitly, which I'm doing right here by saying, hey, my private path is me assemblies, please go look in there. Remember, when we tried to execute this before without the config file, .NET choked. The config file must be named the same as the executable, but be suffixed with .config here in order for the CLR to open this and and look at it and yada yada yada. Main class .exe before when I did this it bombed. Now when I run it, .NET knows to look in me assemblies folder and all, I could put all my assemblies here if I wanted to, if I wanted to clean up this working directory, but you can see it worked. We're happy. Let's change this. Uh, I saved it. Try to rerun main class .exe. It bombs. Okay. And then you can also add, you can list multiple full folders here. You don't have to have just one, but if you have multiple folders, then chances are it's getting a little bit too complex. 